Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss a proprioceptive organ that's located in the tendon of muscles called a Golgi tendon organ. It's named after the Italian physiologist, Mr. Golgi, and then it tells you that this organ is located in the tendons of muscles. And so what we're going to talk about here is really just the basic anatomy, what they are, and then also talk about the reflex arc associated with the Golgi tendon organ, which we'll also call the GTO. So here's a skeletal muscle right here. Most skeletal muscles attach to their corresponding bone through an indirect attachment called a tendon, which is shown right here in white. Now, tendons are composed of dense regular connective tissue, and so as a consequence, running along their length, they have many, many collagen fibers. And we see here that the collagen fibers are oriented along the length of the tendon. Now, the way the muscles work and move the skeleton is the muscles contract and shorten. And so when this muscle contracts and shortens, it's going to pull in this direction, really toward the upper left of this picture. Okay. And also, when it shortens, it's going to pull the tendon in that same direction and hopefully move this bone, right? But as the muscle shortens and moves in this direction, it's going to pull the tendon, and that's going to cause these collagen fibers to be stretched a little bit, right? So we see here this blue neuron right here. This is actually the axon of the Golgi tendon organ. And this Golgi tendon organ is really just a cluster of sensory receptors that detect the degree of tension generated by the muscle by measuring the tension on these collagen fibers. And so whenever these collagen fibers are stretched, it causes the Golgi tendon organ to stretch. And that Golgi tendon organ will depolarize and send signals along this axon to the brain. And so really the first function of the Golgi tendon organ is to monitor the amount of tension generated by the muscle. Okay? And so the amount of tension in these collagen fibers, really the amount of stretch in these collagen fibers, is going to be proportional to the amount of force that this muscle is generating. And the more force this muscle is generating, the more stretch of these collagen fibers and the faster the rate of action potential sent along this axon. And so the brain can use that in a proprioceptive manner to monitor the amount of force or tension that a muscle is generating. So the greater the rate of firing by this axon, in other words, the greater the rate of firing by the Golgi tendon organ, the more force that's being generated by the muscle. And so, in short, the brain can sense how much force is being generated by a muscle at any given time. All right? In terms of exercise, Golgi tendon organs have another function. Now, basically, sum, of, sum it up right here. If the degree of force generation by a muscle becomes too high, the Golgi tendon organ triggers the contracted muscle to relax and the antagonist to contract. So after we look at the next couple of slides, we'll come back here and look at this reflex arc and see what's going on. All right, I've got three different situations here. Let's look at the first two first. So this guy, he's going to bicep curl with a barbell, 100 pounds. And let's say that 100 pounds is submaximal for him. So it's reasonable to assume that he can bicep curl 100 pounds. In this second case, he's going to go up to his maximal effort, 150 pounds. And again, it might be reasonable to say that on a given day, his maximum might be 150 plus or minus 10 pounds. Okay? Maybe with some extra caffeine, he might be able to get up to 170. But again, we're going to assume his maximal effort is 150 pounds. Now, in terms of the Golgi tendon organ, we know that as he has to lift more and more weight with his biceps, so generate more force, there's going to be greater activation of the Golgi tendon organs in that tendon and so the firing rate is going to increase. And so as the amount of force generated by the biceps brachii increases with the barbell curl, so 100 to 150 pounds, the rate of GTO firing increases. And that's alerting the central nervous system that his biceps are having to produce more force. And so that's how this Golgi tendon organ functions in a proprioceptive manner. However, at some point you can get excessive GTO firing. That just means that you're muscles having to generate so much force that it could actually cause damage to the tendon. 
Okay? And if you get to that force where you could damage the tendon, then your muscle should stop producing any more force. So again, let's look at this third picture right here. His maximum effort is 150 pounds. Maybe if he takes a nitric oxide supplement, maybe if it's a good day, he might be able to get up to 170 for his maximum. But if you asked this guy, could you bicep curl 2,000 pounds? Okay, that would be ridiculous. There's no way this guy's gonna be able to, to bicep curl 2,000 pounds. So now what I wanna do is just make a kind of a silly argument. Let's say that just for the sake of argument, that on whatever day, just by magic, this guy could generate enough force in his biceps brachii to curl 2,000 pounds. I know this is a ridiculous thing to think, but let's say his muscle on a good day could curl 2,000 pounds when his maximum is 150. Even if the biceps brachii could somehow generate enough force to curl up 2,000 pounds, the tendon is not strong enough to support the combined weight of the bone and the enormous barbell. Okay, So even if that muscle could somehow generate enough force to lift that enormous weight, which is one ton, that's impossible, the tendon is not strong enough to resist that force. And so, again, even if the muscle could do this, the tendon is just going to tear right off the bone. And that would be really bad. So what's the second function of the Golgi tendon organ, other than monitoring the amount of force or tension generated by a muscle? It's in the case that you were to just keep increasing the force and increasing the force, at some point that tendon could rip. And so before you get to that point, you're going to have inhibition of that muscle to protect it from potential tearing. Because if that muscle were to generate more and more force, this bone presumably is just in the forearm. It's the radius, right? And so if you're holding 2,000 pounds, even if you could somehow hold it up, the tendon's going to rip. And so well before you get to that point, the Golgi tendon organs are going to say, you know what, this is way too much weight to hold. The muscles are generating way too much force. So rather than risk a tendon tearing, we're just going to send some feedback through the spinal cord, and then we're going to inhibit the biceps brachii. Okay? And also what we would see in that case is we would have activation of the triceps brachii, the antagonist. So let's actually go back here and look at this reflex arc. So this would be the case when we have way too much force generated by the muscle, and so we want to inhibit that muscle so that we don't generate any more force and potentially rip the tendon right off the bone. So here's my Golgi tendon organ. In this case, it's in the quadriceps, and then our antagonist is going to be in the hamstrings. So if our quadriceps, for whatever reason, were generating way too much force, enough to, let's say, tear the patellar tendon, then the Golgi tendon organs would start firing really, really fast, and they would send those axons of that type 1b afferent neuron, ultimately to the central nervous system, but really just to the spinal cord, because this is just going to be a reflex. In fact, it's a polysynaptic reflex. So the axons from the Golgi tendon organ are going to synapse with these interneurons. Okay? Now these two interneurons are going to function differently. Okay? This inner neuron over here we see is going to synapse with the red motor neuron, which is then going to go to the quadriceps, again the muscle we're trying to inhibit. Okay? And so this inner neuron is actually going to inhibit this red neuron, and that's going to trigger this neuron to inhibit the quadriceps. Because again, if the quadriceps are generating too much force that might damage, in this case, the patellar tendon, we theoretically want to shut off the quadriceps, decrease the amount of force they're generating. In contrast, the second inner neuron is synapsing with this purple motor neuron, and we see the purple motor neuron is going to the hamstrings, which we actually want to contract in this case. Okay? And so this inner neuron is actually going to activate this purple motor neuron, which is then going to go to the hamstrings and activate the hamstrings. And so in this way, when the quadriceps are generating way too much force that might actually damage the patellar tendon, the quadriceps become inhibited and the hamstrings become activated. All right? And this is a polysynaptic reflex that's going to protect any muscle from generating too much force. If it gets to the point where it's generating too much, in order to prevent the tendon from just ripping off the bone, it's going to cause relaxation of the muscle and then activation of the antagonist muscle. So in this, I use the example of the biceps, but this would be applicable also in 
in the case of the knee joint if we're talking about the quadriceps femori and the hamstrings. All right, so that's really how Golgi tendon organs function. One function is as a proprioceptor, meaning they're simply monitoring the degree of tension or force generated by a muscle. But then if we start to generate way too much force by the muscle, rather than risk injury to the tendon and tearing right off the bone, we're going to trigger this polysynaptic reflex where the contracting muscle is inhibited and then the antagonist to that muscle is stimulated to contract. Hopefully this video made sense to you. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In the next video, we're going to discuss muscle spindles, which actually sort of do the opposite. Thank you.